with that, I'm really happy to actually uh, welcome, and please join me welcome Lauren Stevens, uh, VP Growth Marketing at Spirable, Max Koziolek, uh, CEO and founder at Spectrum, and Emanuel Köchert, Country Manager Dach at Smartly.io. All right, first of all, well, I can't see you really. <laughs> um, so yeah, first of all, uh, thanks for making, uh, making the way to Hamburg and to OMR and join us here on stage. Maybe to kick things off, do you just want to maybe introduce yourself real quickly, say a few words to your company and which main pain points you're solving for our advertisers? Yep, sure. Lauren? I'm uh, Lauren Stevens, the VP of Marketing from Spirable. So Spirable works with some of the largest brands in the industry from Amex to Vodafone um, to Unilever and also many SMBs to help them easily create, scale and optimize video advertising across channels. So the way we do this is through taking contextual data such as the weather, pollen count, time of the day, day of the week, um, live sports scores, product availability and layering this with uh, modular creative to create hundreds or thousands of different variations from that one creative template. So this is creating highly relevant, liquid, and high-performing video ads um, across Facebook channels. Thank you. Emanuel? Yeah, um, I'm Emanuel. I lead the DACH team uh, at Smartly. Um, at Smartly, we take care and manage together with really focused and really um, largest and most advanced DR advertisers anything to do with advertising on social channels. Um, some of these uh, include, for example, as Stefan mentioned, about you here in Germany, um, Zalando, Uber, and in gaming also Ubisoft and, uh, and eBay. Um, some of these advertisers face really big challenges uh, in Facebook. They know this channel is working really well for them, but at some point they hit some kind of a ceiling or some sort of a, a limit, and uh, we work on automating and removing those. Um, last year, two billion um, of ad spend went through our platform on Facebook and Instagram. Hello, my name is Max. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Spectrum. I think just last week, Mark Zuckerberg said the future is private and we as Spectrum, we help brands to join this new future. We bring brands like Telecom, Happy Socks, or other high growth startup, startups or enterprise companies on messaging platforms to do advertising there. Thank you. Um, now, as we've heard a little bit about our panelists, um, I would also love to learn a little bit about you guys. So maybe you can just help me with um, raising your hand uh, for a few questions so we know who's in the room. Uh, I mean, the room is packed, so that's great. Um, how many of you in the audience are advertisers? OK, that's more than half. Do we also have other developers, like tech platforms in the marketing space in the room? Mm, yeah, a few. I, I saw one down there. Um, I, I would assume that, or how many of you are already actively advertising on Instagram or, or Facebook? I'd love to see that. <laughs> um, and last question from my end, how many of you are already working actively with one of our marketing partners, being it creative or ad tech or in, in any space? OK. That's great. Any, anything else from your end uh, you would love to know about the audience? Any agencies? Any, any agencies? agencies in the room? All right. Cool. So um, let's kick things off. Uh, Emmanuel, I mean, we know each other for quite a long time now. I mean, I used to manage smartly on Facebook site in the past. So I know you pretty much since the early days. And uh, knowing also your, your founder and CEO, Crystal, really well, I mean, pretty much from day one, he was talking about as a vision of smartly to really automate uh, Facebook marketing as much as possible. And it's really 
been always at the heart of your company. Now when we're seeing all those developments that uh, Eva was talking about, a lot of the um, new dynamics uh, on the Facebook side, can you maybe talk a little bit about heart, uh, how Smartly still today adds additional layers of value on top of Facebook optimization? Yeah, sure, of course. So um, I've been at Smartly now for almost four years, and four years ago, the Facebook products, um, Ads Manager and Power Editor, were not quite there where they are now. So <laughs> four years ago, it was, I think, as a marketing partner, much easier to convince or to add value on top of uh, the native tools. Today, that's a completely different game. So um, those of you who know, um, have been around for those years as well, know that uh, Ads Manager today is a, a very different product to four years ago. So we are needing to focus much more on what else is there available. And I think Stefan mentioned earlier one of those aspects. So we really focus on um, automating uh, at scale, uh, the creation and also the optimization of um, Facebook and Instagram campaigns. And ideally doing that on something where we are marrying what uh, Facebook's strengths and what the advertisers know about their clients, how we can couple that together. So um, on the creation side, um, that would be an example, for example, uh, with McDonald's last year, we worked um, on a campaign where weather-based information, so an open weather API, made the judgment per city, so um, uh, individually, whether you'd be seeing on nice weather, for like, example, like today, um, uh, some ice cream or milkshake, or on a rainy city, um, maybe some more comfort food or uh, a coffee. And if it's really cold, then the warmer stuff they have available. So um, that's an example on the creative side. Um, other difficulties that we might be solving is, um, for example, uh, Carrefour. It's a retail um, company in, in Italy. They had um, these weekly leaflets, Handzettel in German. And um, each store, and they had more than 1,000, had different offers and different products and different prices. So that was a completely uh, not feasible to reflect this in, on Facebook. Um, so we have a product called Automated Ads, which pulls this, uh, populates and creates the, the ads itself, and also um, delivers them in the right city or the right location based on the user that will see the right products. Yeah, and the second part is um, optimization. So I think um, a lot of things have moved on, on on Facebook side. So I think Stefan mentioned earlier, some partners uh, and some advertisers have um, attribution models that don't m quite match what Facebook does. Of course, you don't only advertise on Facebook, but also on other channels. So pulling back these attributed results and then optimizing based on those at scale, that's something that we also um, yeah, focus and help on. Cool. Thank you. Um, you mentioned in your introduction that you're working with some of the largest uh, brands out there. Um, on the other hand, I know that you're also serving a lot of mid-sized and partially uh, smaller advertisers and businesses uh, of the world. Can you maybe explain a little bit how those different types of advertisers are leveraging your platform differently? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so the mid-sized clients, quite often it's so that you have a small team. Um, that team might be taking care of uh, a lot of channels or it might be taking care of a lot of countries at the same time. So you don't have the time for each performance channel or market to really be putting in uh, a daily, looking at the bids and the budgets and the performance every day. So for them, it's more of a low touch, set and forget type of um, uh, creative and optimization help we do. Um, and for the largest ones, such as, for example, About You, yeah, we. It, it, I would say by vertical, it depends a little bit on in the gaming industry. You don't have a product catalog. You have to really leverage, for example, um, yeah, get going modular and, and trying out various creatives at scale or um, automatically having your customer lifetime value or ROAS calculations, which are then feeding how much budget in which country and which uh, funnel step, automatically scaling that up and down. So. Um, yeah, I think they vary quite a lot. And, uh, uh, and if you take, for example, a more traditional vertical like retail or, or automotive, um, the whole complexity of this uh, very fragmented structures where, campaign, uh, where budgets are maybe with a d local dealership or a local store um, and the headquarter has the knowledge, this complexity is also something um, with the largest ones where, yeah, where we've seen automated ads and similar products help a lot. Oh. Um. I mean, in the pre-brief, uh, I asked you also about, uh, well, 
showing and maybe talking uh, a little bit about one specific um, client case um, of a client using Smartly's automated uh, feed or automation features. And uh, well, obviously, you saw great results coming out of that. So um, we actually brought uh, the last minute.com case study here. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about um, what you've done for, for last minute. Sure, yeah. So last minute has only started working with us uh, a couple of months ago. Um, but I wanted to show it uh, anyway this one because it's uh, a very recent success and um, I think uh, showcases quite nicely two of the things that I just mentioned. So before, as the name suggests, Last Minute has a very time sensitive offer of products or in their case flights, hotels and packages. So um, what they were not able to do before was really to um, scale to a certain level because essentially their, all of their packages and all of their flights had a, a start and an end date and manually creating those was a huge overhead. On top of that, they also used double click um, as a tracking. So for after creating campaigns for e uh, each and every uh, individual ad, they had to go into double click uh, and use the click trackers there and put them into that, which yeah, at a, at a certain point it was just not feasible anymore. So they looked for alternatives. Um, and uh, yeah, they started speaking to, to us about three months ago. Um, since then, we're able to, again, with a product called Automated Ads, um, <clears throat> let uh, automated ads on an existing data set they already have. I mean, they have end and start dates um, and some other product information of each of their products, flights, and packages. And that's powering and feeding into, uh, into Smartly, where we automatically start uh, and pause and, um, and also um, attribute the, the budget to the campaigns where these offers work the best. Um, and mention double click. So we also have a double click integration where these uh, click trackers will dynamically be pulled into the uh, into ad level um, as soon as the campaign is created. Um, and yeah, and, uh, here are some results of what, what they managed to achieve. One more thing on the creative side you see there, it also has, of course, on brand and um, the product information on top with their, the hotel ratings. It could be anything. Whatever you have in your product feed, it can be added in there as well. Um, and yeah, I think probably the quote that I, uh, you would like to hear is that um, I think it was, it was the first time that they managed to get new acquisition, um, new customer acquisition on any social channel profitable. So therefore, they'll um, probably be spending a bit more on Facebook in the next coming months. Thanks for that. Um, Let's, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, Max, I mean, you, you were talking about uh, the work that you're doing in messaging uh, earlier. And with messaging, you're still or kind of tapping into a still fairly new uh, area. So where I would ex or at least expect that a lot of your clients bring less experience on the table than they probably have in the ad tech space. Um, and knowing from my previous experience and having an agency before that as well, I know that less experience usually comes with a desire of more control. Um, how do you balance that in that area to pretty much give full automation or as much automation as possible, but still balance that with a desire for control for your, for your advertisers? Yeah, th that's a very good question, actually, because obviously it sounds scary. You automating conversations with your customers, so that's First of all, a scary thing. So that's not just automating an ad set. This is really a conversation with your customers. So that's always a bit scary. But uh, there are two ways to, to think about this. The first one is, if you speak to 100,000 customers of yours, there's no way that you can do this in a manual way. So there is the only option is automation I in that sense. When it goes wrong, there is a tool to hand this over to a human agent. So there is uh, a solution solution for this if the automation goes wrong. And the other part, probably even, even more important, is when you're building an automated experience on Messenger, it makes a lot of sense to work with a tech platform and not just uh, a full agency approach because that gives you as a brand the full control. So you see how the user journey is going, you see the copy, you're seeing the drop off. And I think if you want to change something, you do it immediately, it's live. And I think that's probably something that is important for Messenger that you always see how the users are going through that automated conversation. And if you need to change something, you can change immediately something and it's not like, you know, know, they're coming with a draft. You're saying, yeah, please change that. Then they go back, change it. No, they come back to you. This, you know, this loop of hell, that's not something you want to do. So that's why you sh should go with a tech platform in that sense. So that gives you much more control as a brand uh, rather than going for a pure agency approach in that sense. 
that makes <coughs> that makes a lot of sense. Um, Eva was talking uh, earlier also a lot about liquidity and kind of therefore the importance to reach the right audience with the right message and therefore the right creative. Um, I mean, we all know that historically it's been really challenging to develop many, many creatives and it's been quite cost intensive uh, as well. Um, as a creative platform uh, partner, Spirable, as you mentioned earlier, helps advertisers to really automate that creative production process. Maybe you can, you can just dig a little bit deeper into how that actually works and how, you're, how I can picture that process uh, as an advertiser. Spirable helps yeah, thanks. Um, so Spirable automates and scales by taking um, modular creative assets such as video, text, images, and layering this with contextual data, some of which I mentioned before, uh, and putting this into one creative template, which then uh, can generate thousands of different variations from that one template, template based on the different data inputs. So as the data changes, the creative changes automatically. Uh, weather's a good example, actually, and Emmanuel touched on this before. But so, if you're in London and it's raining, which it usually is, you know the ad variation and the copy and the uh, product recommendation is very different to if it's sunny and you're in Hamburg. So this just shows, you know, highly relevant and targeted um, advertising that can dynamically change um, based on just one creative template, which then automates and scales across all Facebook Facebook channels. That's really exciting. When we spoke earlier, um, you were actually mentioning some of the work that you've done with Captain Morgan. Uh, I know it's still early, but we're still talking about uh, alcohol, but hopefully you don't mind. W would you mind sharing a little bit uh, more details about the work that you've done? Because uh, to my knowledge, it kind of touches creative, it touches messenger, and it kind of is a really good example of kind of where, um, yeah, where the future of creative and the ads will probably go. Yeah, this is a really good example, actually. So we created um, automated 5,000 videos from one creative template. Uh, and Captain Morgan really wanted to change the way they were communicating with their customers and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, which is something a brand like this was never able to do before. So they created dynamic ads on Facebook and Instagram um, that use location data to, ta to target uh, the message to the right audience. So if you're in London, the message is talking about, ahoy me London captains, get yourself down to the dog and duck for a free Captain Morgan and Coke. So once they click on the ad, they're then sent to a Facebook Messenger where they have a conversation with a, a chatbot um, who's the captain. Um, this then gives them a free drink and then we use location uh, data geo-targeting to send them to their local bar. Um, so once they get to the bar, then they're sent a personalized video back through the bot. And this helped continue the conversation afterwards. In fact, 27% of people who redeemed the drink um, continued the conversation afterwards, and it resulted in a 9% uplift in sales. So this is a great example of how personalized dynamic creative can increase performance online and offline. Cool. I mean, you both mentioned, uh, well, on the one hand, hyper-granular uh, targeting before. On the other hand, you were talking about predicted budget allocation. Doesn't that somehow conflict with all the themes that uh, Eva was, was mentioning earlier, where we're talking about liquidity and kind of give the algorithms as much freedom as possible to optimize? Maybe you can... Yeah, well, I'll, I'll go first. I think for us... Um, Hypergranular doesn't have to conflict with the concept of liquidity. So we integrate with Facebook features like placement asset customization and segment asset customization. And this really allows advertisers to customize their creative for the right asset and, and placement. Um, so using our integration and through the platform, um, brands can do this easily um, in a matter of minutes. So you've got the right aspect uh, for the right placement. Obviously, you know, feed being um, a square and then Instagram stories being uh, 9 by 16 can just be a bit of a nightmare. So this saves advertisers a lot of time and makes sure that they've got the optimal creative size for the right placement, which obviously creates more relevant advertising and, and drives performance. Manuel, how does that look for you? Yeah, and um, so on the budget side or budgeting side, um, our product, which is called Predictive Budget Allocation and um, Facebook's CBO, work really nicely together because quite often it's so 
that you don't actually have, um, let's say, a thousand euro daily budget on your campaign, but really what you're looking for is you want to get, let's say, as many conversions for um, cost per order of X, or I want to get a return on investment of Y. So what, f what Smartly uh, enables you to do is um, you can basically scale the budget of a group of campaigns based on this relative metric. So within the campaign, Facebook decides which audiences um, and where the budget should go optimally. But um, as a group, for example, you can group all of your new, cr um, uh, new customer acquisition campaigns into one uh, budget bundle and put there the um, average CPO should be 10 euro. What Smartly will then do is we will then allocate um, the budgets amongst those campaigns and also uh, scale up and down the total budget of this pool. So they, they complement each other really nicely. That's good to hear and to know. Um, Max, I mean, switching back to, to Messenger, um, which is obviously a very exciting field and listening to the F8 uh, the other week, I mean, we've all heard that messaging is the future. Um, and obviously driving relevant messages to customers um, is core and it is pretty much at the heart of your company. So. Maybe you can actually um, also talk a little bit and explain a little bit more how Spectrum really makes it extremely easy for, for advertisers to really jump start into the messaging space and really get their own personalized uh, messaging experience life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think Spectrum is one of the very few you know, end-to-end -end, uh, platforms in that sense where you basically very easily you, know, you set up the ad which you know, drives people into the messaging experience and there you obviously, this is a pre-scripted conversation, so you have to somehow script the conversation and this can be at any level of complexity you can imagine and that is something we can very easily set up and create and that's basically the heart of what we do to be relevant for the user to make it easier. If you don't open up a new channel to make it more difficult for the user to get what the user wants or to shop or something like this. So you just want to make it very, very easy. And after that, and that is probably the most important piece, is to analyze what happened. Um, so how does the user interact? How he went down in the conversation flow, what he was saying, and so on. Did he actually convert? That's also something you can track in the, in the platform. And I think this is, you know, together this is a solution where Every marketing department, every social media manager can start right away. There's no coding uh, necessary, so it's a very easy start. And that's why on how we make it easy for, for advertisers. Cool. I mean, it sounds like, uh, and I would assume that, that many people think that really having those conversations play more in the upper funnel uh, part when it's about awareness generation, maybe a consideration phase. Where, where do you see the role of messaging when it really comes to direct response and the more lower funnel events? Sure, when we speak about conversion, um, I would say that currently messaging is the best place for advertisers to be for three reasons. The first one uh, is it's not too crowded, so not too many people are already using messaging, so going there offers you a competitive advantage. It offers you a lower CPC, so that's the first reason. The second reason is that conversations tend to be convert best, better than landing pages. So because you're asking, for example, guided selling, so it's like you are in a shop and you talk to a shop owner um, and they ask you specific questions about your needs, what you want, have you been here before, and all those kind of things. And you guide the user through the journey and in the end you're just displaying not the full product catalog, you're just displaying the relevant um, items from your, from your shop to the user and that obviously converts um, much, much better. And the third reason why advertisers should go there, uh, should go to Messenger is um, because you're building here an audience. I mean, Messenger works a little like the perfect combination of social and email marketing. So every user you get, you have as an audience and you can write a message to that user again. So when you have a new product coming out or you want to retarget people because you're having a sale or something like this, you can write a message again to that kind of users and that obviously drives conversion uh, like hell. So that's why I would say right now messaging is the best place for advertisers to be. Sounds good. Um, you've recently released a case study um, with Happy Socks where you're pretty much uh, touching on most of those things. Maybe you can just, just share a little bit more details of what you've done for them. 
uh, uh, sure. So first of all, I, I love Happy Socks, right? So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, it's just a great product. And what they did is for for Christmas and also for Valentine's Day, they created a basically an experience where because they have so many cool socks, it's hard to to find the right one. So they were just fighting, basically guiding the user through the journey and then directly sending them to the cart. And as you can see in the numbers, that is pretty uh, pretty remarkable because they started in Q4 in their busiest season because all the socks are sold, or many socks are obviously sold for Christmas. They started right away, they immediately saw the success and that's basically showing how easy it is to set something up on, on Messenger and immediately see results. Cool. Um, I mean, listening to pretty much what, what all of you uh, told us over the last 20 minutes, I mean, it sounds like that a lot of those areas, starting from media, going to creative, going to messaging, are becoming more and more interdependent and kind of more and more, um, yeah, merging closer together. I mean, how do you see that as, as a company? How do you, are you either tapping into um, media space or creative space, or are you thinking about partnering with the other platforms or agencies in that space? How do, how do you tackle that convergence of all those media elements uh, coming together. It's either of you. <laughs> yeah, for, for us, it's a collaboration. So Spiral's the technology layer. So we work with all different types of agencies, media agencies, creative agencies, specialist agencies who created the bot, for example, for Captain Morgan. Um, and we, co we collaborate with them to get the best results for our advertisers. So for the Captain Morgan example, we collabor collaborated with Dentsu. Um, they set up the campaign, set up the ad set, ran, um, ran the budget and optimized the media. And we served all the video ads, created and served all the video ads. So you know, it really is a collaboration for us where we're um, you know, working with the partners that we need to work with to get the, to get the best results. How do you see that? Um, very similar. I would say uh, typically we find out with our clients which, which are the topics or challenges they have we can cover, and then we also bring in some other partners if needed. So absolutely, I think uh, all three of our tools can be interconnected and used uh, in parallel. And uh, if you have worked with some FMPs before, they usually have some type of specialization, and they can be combined um, pretty, pretty neatly. Cool. So last question from my end before we, we open up for uh, some Q&A from, from the audience. Um, I mean, it seems like automation, machine learning, AI, I mean, it is already all around us. Um, where do you see, um, or what, what's kind of the most exciting and most emerging trend that you're seeing around automation, AI, machine learning, uh, whatever you want to call it, when it comes to Facebook or Instagram marketing um, in general? Um, for me, what's really exciting is to see how some of the industries and verticals which before might have been a little bit more cautious about digital marketing, how they are now leveraging a lot of the things that probably gaming or e-com or travel have spearheaded and brought forward. So as I mentioned earlier, we are now also working with a lot of brick and mortar and offline based um, advertisers that are now like really opening their eyes. How how some of these automation now makes it feasible for them with a more complicated or more difficult company or marketing structure to really um, benefit from that. So that's something that I'm really enjoying to be part of. Oh, Laura? Yeah, for us, um, you know, in the video space especially, I think it's uh, moving towards modular creative that is 100% customizable. So each frame of a video n can now be edited in flight. So that means you can launch the campaign, see how the video is doing, and then make adjustments um, as the campaign's going. And if you think about how this was done in the past, you know, you may go back and forth with an agency. This could take days or even weeks to sort of edit a video and then upload it again to Facebook. But now it can be done in-house through the platform and push live within a matter of minutes. So I think that is really going to change the game for efficiencies um, and performance for, for agencies and brands. I think for me, uh, the whole uh, machine learning part, or what's the most exciting about machine learning is that you out of a sudden understand the world completely differently. So you can, for example, you know, take a picture and you, know, you understand automatically in a structured way what's in this picture. And I think that's, that's very exciting. And also the same is for, true for language. So if people write something and you automatically understand what they want from you, I think that's 
very, very exciting, and we will see a lot of more happening um, here in the future, and that unlocks completely new business models and completely new optimizations, because if a user is asking directly a brand, hey, do you have that also in Oversize, you all of a sudden have a signal for your brand, which was never possible before in an automated way to say, hey, yeah, maybe we have it in Oversize right now, or we will come back later when we have it, and this is completely automated, and that lifts a little bit the uh, they know the heavy work Stefan also was speaking about from our shoulders, and I think that is that is uh, a great uh, future ahead of us. Cool, thank you. Let's let's open up for. I think we have like five minutes left for for some questions from the audience. Um, we have mics over there. So do do we have any questions for either of the three of them? We have one. Well, one there, one there. Let's start back there, because that's closer. We're coming with a mic for you. Hi. Um, I got a question for you, Max. I've kind of dabbled with messenger marketing a little bit. And the question I always had in mind was how to stay safe on the DSGVO side while doing messenger marketing and not ruin your or um, bring in t too much friction. Um. So it's all about how you design the user journey. Uh, and often it's a, it's a lot about testing. But what I usually recommend is just put yourself in the shoes of the user and don't create a more, more friction on a new channel than you would have on a, on, a, on a web page or something like this. And if you are short, if you are snappy, I think then this, this really works. And then it's also really, really brand safe. And if you if you struggle there, um, it's just a, usually just a matter of testing. It's a new channel, um, so start with a small audience, test it out, and you will learn immediately what works and what doesn't work. And then you iterate, and at some point y you you get there. Uh, so we started with a couple of clients where they, at the beginning. It was not so well performing, but after a few twists, which was sometimes only a word, only a sentence, and all of a sudden it improved in a way that it was easily beating the landing page. So uh, my recommendation is measure and improve. Okay, thanks. Cool. We have one more in the front. No, this is done. Um, but I have just one question. Have you already have cases where you work together on one client? Maybe all three together or with other uh, Facebook partners? Who wants to take that? <laughs> um, yes, we, not us three in particular, actually, I don't think. But, um, you know, like I said, for the Captain Morgan, it was, um, it was ourselves and another, um, another agency that was local to us in, in London. Um, that worked on the bot with us, and you know, also you know, other partners we work with, definitely media agencies, uh, where they're actually sort of owning the relationship with the client, and we're supporting them for video. And then other times it's us leading the relationship directly with the client. Um, and a lot of the brands that we're working with, especially CPG, are looking to in-house. Um, so there's a lot of sort of. Uh, movement towards that, especially with some of the larger brands, and there's definitely the need for different partners to come in and support that when that happens. So that's how we see it. Any other thoughts to that? Any any other questions from the audience? Looks like we answered all of them. Cool. So with that, uh, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, Lauren, Emmanuel, and uh, Max for joining us. So, all right. I'll take that one. Let's wait. That's kind of magnetic. No? Right. Thank you, Sebastian, for this wonderful panel, and thank all three of you for all the insights you brought to us on automating through a Facebook marketing partner. Um, I think we're done for today at this uh, masterclass. We thank you so much for your time, and we wish you a wonderful online marketing rock stars. Ich habe einfach so eben mir die Frage gestellt, warum spreche ich auf Englisch? Habt eine tolle <laughs> online marketing rock stars. Genießt die Konferenz. Um, besucht uns auf dem Stand von Facebook, wenn ihr weitere Fragen habt. Wir freuen uns, die alle zu beantworten. Und es wird auch ein paar spannende Workshops da geben in kleineren Runde. Vielen Dank und einen schönen Tag. Ciao. Vielen Dank. Ciao.